Wholeness and Balanced Vibrations family, let me be the first to welcome you as a reflection of you. I'm your brother Curtis Aru and this is the One Tribe Podcast, home of the Daily Spectrum Resonance where we share solutions relating to physical, mental, and spiritual well-being with sovereignty as our goal. We discuss what works with adept guests, tribe, no theory, just raw, unapologetic truth because truth is nature and we honor her gifts. So leave your esoteric shoes at the door and let's make soul connections with every step forward. Let's keep vibing in resonance at top speeds because the portal is now open. First, 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 first. first. I cannot have a, a bill. I forgot to give thanks to my mother uh, for tuning in on for she said she was going to tune in, but we'll leave this in wax and whenever she do it, it'd be amazing. So my mom is named Limit Lisa. So my mother, give thanks for you, all you've done for me and everybody else uh, under your umbrella, under your tutelage. Um, my mom's a Taurus. So all those who tap into the metaphysics as well, you know Taurus is like the, you know, the, uh, the geometry that kicks us back to the mother. So that realization came later when I realized that, hey, I was born literally from a Taurus, you know, star constellation system. And she was the first person to introduce me something outside of, of God at the time. She introduced me to the Zodiac. <laughs> and I was like, wow, it's something that goes beyond the church. And she gave me that nugget. And it's what I needed to be able to expand uh, and ask questions that were outside of the, the, the realm of Christianity at the time. And Throughout my, my, my uh, her, her raising me, very hard work. And she's also an educator, an educator. Every friend I've ever brought home, and there was a lot <laughs> that I would um, bring home and introduce to. I was raised in, in, in the East Coast of uh, in, in South Carolina, and uh, born in North Carolina, raised in South Carolina. But what she did for me is she, she gave me uh, a community. She actually uh, constructed places for me to actually explore myself out in nature. Um, uh, where there was where there was need for more masculine energy in my life, she brought in people. She brought in uncles. She brought in martial arts teachers. She brought in. Uh, she got like every young male in my community together. And we started a baseball team. Um, she kept me very active: football, basketball, track, base, like anything I could do, I did do. And she supported me every step of the way, even if I sat on a bench. She was there, <laughs> holding me down. Um, even when leaving the country, you know, she was like, I don't, I don't know what you, uh, I don't, uh. if that's what you want to do, I'll support you. And um, this allowed me to fly in the way I did to always have support. And uh, this is the first place I realized that you know, unconditional love was a thing, you know, that the name came later, but unconditional love is what I, what I had. And even though my pops wasn't there, let's say half the time, she oh, she never demeaned, uh, demeaned him or talked bad about him because that was a reflection of me. And if she said that about him, I would definitely feel bad about myself during those young impressionable years, impressionable years. So I was always lifted, you know, with a number of mothers. But my mother was like, my friends would call my mother a mother's mother. Like, your mom's a mom's mom. Like, wouldn't, wouldn't piece it together till later. So. This is, I, I give thanks to her and my grandmothers and all the mothers in my life. Um, and so I don't get, I don't take enough time to actually put that out there. So I want to give thanks to my mom. So thank you, mom. This. <laughs> As we move forward, also I give thanks to Divine Feminine, partner, fiance, Danielle, for joining me on this path. Of, uh, of growth, expansion in all directions, uh, building a family, which is, as we learn, it's such a, uh, it takes, it takes, um, it takes magic. It really to keep family together and keep us moving forward and raise children and, and just to be in a relationship. It takes patience. It takes unconditional love. It takes so much, you know, to be able to, um, to balance in the space. So I give thanks for, for you, dear, for, uh, for taking this journey with me. Oh. <laughs> so creative, so creative, so amazing. Yeah. Today's topic is 
decolonizing the feminine, the divine feminine, and masculine. And what this actually means in taking this forward. So decolonizing, we're talking about colonization, we're pretty much aware of what that is. And changing the changing of a culture through acculturation, through takeover, through uh, massacre, through uh, brainwashing, through a number of different tactics and strategically to create a new or demolish the old. These, um, these also take time, take spaces in our memory, genetically and, and physically. You know, and when we talk about genetically, we're talking about what had happened years and years and years ago. And um, as you know, they'll tell you in, in East and West Africa, Ghana, Sankofa, never forget where you've been in order to move forward, because you need those things. Those things that happened then were lessons that was the, that you didn't necessarily have to live through in the physical and your ancestors did and they you play pool dust off some of those old books and recordings or listen to uh some of the elders speak on what happened and you take that forward the jews and all of that they move it forward with you as you uh, transcend the times now because you will begin to see things loop see things cycle and if you see things cycle too many times you will realize that you become cycle you begin <laughs> doing the same thing over and over again which will drive you nuts to drive you crazy so going back to decolonize what had happened, in order to move forward, we have to go back as far as we know. And we start with self first. You know, when we're talking about the balance of masculine and feminine energy within ourselves and where we go from there. So we're gonna start off with that question first. Then we're gonna continue to build like balancing the, the divine masculine within yourself, divine feminine within yourself. How do you come up with that balance and have you uh and in, in, we know you have reached friction in those roles that you've been identifying. So I started for myself when doing partially them. I was surrounded by women in my, how I was raised. Grandma, granddaddy, uh, uh, with more grandmas and aunties and mothers in my life than father figures. And so my orientation on the respect for women was on a whole nother level being in the South. And um, this was different than my friends. That we had a whole different outlook, even though we were in the same community, different households, different perspectives. And realizing how, having the compassion to see, hey, if I was growing up in the same household, in the same place, in the same day, with the same family, with the same pops and mom, grandmother, I would be thinking the exact same way as, as Pookie. You know, I'd be thinking the exact same way as this brother. And so I would find myself watching quite a lot and learning quite a lot to trying to figure out, you know, how, why do we think the way we do? And enrolled into just, you know, just observe observation over time, over time, and experiencing these things. And for myself, just diving into uh, my uniqueness where I love music. Music is my music. It's how I get down. Uh, singing, uh, dancing. And so I always knew, uh, learn. If you want to learn something, you learn from the best, you know? So I wanted to learn how to dance. All the best, da best dancers around me were female. And that was, I was like, okay, I like how they move, you know, move your body like a snake, you know, rack, rotate, you moving, it's like, um, and so I began to adapt posture. I could see male and female, I could see a walk. Uh, somebody walking maybe a quarter mile away, you know, and I would know exactly who that was based on how they moved. And so I started like taking this, uh, this internal uh, memory bank on movements. And so just mimicking that. So within that nature, I would find myself doing, uh, communicate with a lot more sisters, you know, just because I'm trying to learn. <laughs> and my orientation was more to female. So I would always learn from them in those spaces. And and I would learn a lot of my, about their perspective on God, their perspective on the world. And it would always, um, It would always amaze me how different, you know, males and females thought, and oh, especially as in, in elementary and high school, maybe, and then college. I mean, how you know, we think they seem like when I talk to my guy, they think they know what they're talking about. And I talk to my sister, like, well, well, they don't actually know what they're saying. And going back and forth, trying to find a type of balance, what type of truth. And in this balance within, let's say, my, uh, as I begin to express myself a bit more, it was interesting to see how um, how these things matched up, uh, balance between the, uh, sorry, 
my feminine expression of self. Uh, well, uh, right now, I'll class my, that's what we classify later. But um, to be be able to be more compassionate, you know, uh, not so hard, more heart centered, and that would begin begin to be classified in a more feminine way of expression of self. Is that correct? Not necessarily. And learning that um, the balance between that comes with inside. Let me digress a bit more. Coming back to self, love. When we love, we should love from the heart first. And so as we communicate today, I ask that we come from the heart as we speak. You know, that way we can get out of the head, out of the mind, out of the emotions, out of the ego, and kind of come from here first. And where we go from there, it came from the heart. So it should resonate. And so I'm uh, going to pause right there and get, throw it up to someone else. And how do you balance your divine masculine and divine feminine energy today? I'll share. For me, it was actually the opposite. Uh, my mother and father were in the home growing up, but I grew up as an athlete. So I was with my dad and brothers and cousins most of the time um, with boys, with men, um, and working in that dynamic of power, uh, strength, physical strength, competition. Um, so as I, it wasn't until after I left college that I would hear the word uh, cold a lot. I would hear the word um, standoffish. I would. I have a friend that to this day still says, "You, you sound like a dude." Like in the way that I maneuver relationships. So for me, it has really been. I'll say in the last year, a lot of heart and wound work. Um, I used. To, I love jeans. I love pants. So flowy clothes, skirts, and really going back to revisit the spaces where these thought processes came from, where um, I where I picked up the belief that having a more masculine energy as a woman was wrong and forcing the femininity when that's not really where I want to flow, but flowing in that masculine with a flow, right? With the flow and not this this rigidity. Um, and where I'm working from it now is for money. You know, I, my relationship with money, I've always looked at as masculine, like get the money, get the money, get the money, get the money. And as I worked on becoming more feminine, it, it became, oh, money is bad, money is bad. So finding that balance back in there with the money, with self-expression, with flow, um, it's just been really revisiting these the root of these thought processes and these feelings and these spaces uh sitting with myself in those spaces the younger version of me the child version of me the young woman of me um in these spaces and really breaking down those beliefs and and holding my own hand and walking back to this space to this reality in compassion and in love for myself, not anybody else, for myself, because that's where it has to take places with myself. And that's where I have to break down these paradigms with myself. So holding my whole own hand and saying that you are beautiful as you are, it is okay as you are, but let's bring a little more balance into these situations from the past, which alters the memory and reflection of them now in the present. That's how I'm working through it. Thanks. I want, I want to answer your question, but I want to pick up on something that Danielle said that just triggered something to me. It is this, first of all, who's defining this? So like what the question is decolonizing the feminine, then, you know, I want to start with where do we learn what that even means? So in certain cultures, we're matriarchal. In our culture, we're matriarchal. So it's a different representation it's a variant on everything that we see in this culture on what it even means to be feminine so riding that tension between the masculine and the feminine so i don't you know it's like first let's make the distinction between healthy masculine and unhealthy masculine healthy feminine and unhealthy feminine because when i look at danielle i see a very feminine being that's not to say that she's not also in her healthy masculine power, but that's the decolonization that needs to happen, I think, first and foremost. The divine feminine is solar power. 
I remember the first time that I learned that the masculine is actually lunar and the feminine is solar. It shifted everything for me. So, you know, I would always like to start with what did we learn? Like we have to remember that this, this matrix that we're in is flipped. It's inverted. So it's almost like everything you think you know, just flip it the other way and ask yourself, if I turn it the other way, would it feel more true in my body? Yes, probably. So first of all, of course, we, we are going to appear maybe more masculine because we come from a culture where that's required, where that is necessary, where we were doing different things. So if we just close our eyes for a minute and, you know, like see how we're acculturated, close your eyes and think of, come up with an image, draw forward an image of the feminine and see who shows up. Like, what does she even look like for you? It's likely that if you get a picture, she's not Oshun or Yemoya. I mean, probably for this crowd, yes, but you had to work hard to get there. So for her, we just have to give ourselves a, a collective break and start to dismantle what we were, what we learned because it's quite frankly, it's probably wrong. And then come into the tension that exists between us of who do I say the divine feminine is? Who do I say the sacred masculine is? Who do my ancestors tell me I am? And then move from that place. So then to answer your direct question, I mean, that's where it began for me. So for me, I define it every day. It is a, it is a moving, not a target, but it's a moving, it's, it has its own consciousness. Some days more masculine energies will occur. I got to get stuff done. Some days um, I'm harvesting. Some days I'm resting. Some days I'm the goddess in repose. It just depends. And that's, I, I've learned to let that be okay. Creating money is feminine. It's not masculine. So it's flipped. It's all flipped. I think, therefore, it becomes. That's that's feminine. I, feminine, we know to use our will and our word to have dominion over these lower frequency vibrations that tell us that how we show up in our masculine is toxic. I mean, I think the first thing is to just disagree, to revoke your consent from that that mindset. I don't, I don't agree with that. Okay, I'm a complete fan. Okay, I wanna go next, just because uh, what Kimberly just shared, shared reminded me of my own journey. I'm the last born of my family, and my mom had eight kids. Now we're seven. And for some reason, every time there was a tough situation going on with my elder brothers and sisters, they would come to me to get it fixed. <laughs> so I grew up believing that I have to be strong for everyone else, even for the people who were supposed to be stronger than me. They expected me or they some way, somehow thought I would figure it out, thought I would fight that battle better. And I reached a place in my life where other people, because I've developed that energy of I have to be strong because everybody expects me to be strong and everybody counts on me. I didn't know how to be, to not be strong. I didn't know how to admit that me too, you know, need help, need somebody to come and help me fight my own battles. So I will fight my battles and other people's battles and I will think it's okay. That's what I have to do because I'm strong. And at some point, I've started noticing that it wasn't working because I didn't want to be always strong. And maybe people don't even want me to be always strong because I started noticing that even in my relationships, my friendships, people didn't know how to relate to me. Yes, they will know that, okay, if I'm in trouble, if I have something going on, if I need answers, some way, somehow, I can go to Christelle. But they didn't 
they never had the opportunity to have Christel go to them, so they didn't know what to do with that. They didn't know what to do with that person who is always strong, who always have it together. So it was it was difficult. And because I didn't understand that it was coming from me, I would think I'm not lucky enough to find good friends or good people that are ready to also have their shoulder available for me to cry on. I made it about them not being there for me. And I didn't realize at the time that I wasn't making myself available and I wasn't open enough because I was too conditioned to be strong. And why I said what Kimberly mentioned is, you know, hit me because we always have that image of what it should be, how people should act, who they should show up as, especially women. And I have girlfriends who used to tell me, you are too smart for men. You are too, you know, men don't know how to relate with smart women like that. They like women who are dumb, who can believe their lies, but you always spot their lies, they don't like it. And I thought I needed to be stupid, right? To deserve a good man. And something in me just knew that was it was wrong, right? That image that society had created of what a feminine woman should be wasn't in alignment with me. Yes, maybe it was overdone that strong person. I, you know, I knew there was there needed to be a balance. But at the same time, I knew that the reason why people thought they should they could come to me is because. I am strong and there is nothing wrong with it. So for me, the journey has been to honor who I am, honor my identity as a leader, a born leader, I guess that's why people always knew they should come to me. Honor that, not feeling bad about it, not trying to fix it and become something more acceptable for a woman to be weak, to be not smart enough or let things happen just to be accepted you know, find the balance. So that's the journey for me to embrace my emotions more, be okay with them, pay attention to them, feel them, and go with the flow on a daily basis. When I feel like doing something, I do it. When I don't feel like it, I don't do it. And I don't have that belief that I have to carry people on my shoulder. I'm there for people because I all know that I'm a leader and I give myself permission to not be the leader for everybody. I give myself permission to not be strong for everybody <laughs> and not be strong at all of sometimes, it's okay. So that was for, that's for me the journey of finding that balance, not denying that, yes, I can be a woman and be strong. And at the same time, I don't have to be strong all the time. So that's, that has been the journey for me. Oh, this family. All right, so uh, there's more people that jumped in and giving thanks. How we flowing is you, you, uh, we, we operate on questions right now and you no know, take jumping on with uh, anybody else who's speaking in resonance and either speaking on something that they connected with you in harmony and uh, and moving forward, you know, bringing this forward. Um, that's that's how we move right now with the question. My mom did come through, giving thanks, mother, coming through, love you. Gave you some love earlier. I'm going to do it again right now. Uh, <laughs> I was just giving thanks for all you've done for me. Uh, I can never give thanks this much. You know, I only have what I can in the now moment. I give thanks for all you've done, mother. Um, from, you know, watching me in, in every sport aspects to crying up at martial arts, you know, getting beat up on to being strong my own to defend myself, to go into uh, football, basketball, baseball, track, perform in front of crowds or just perform in front of you, you know, as you gave me my first saxophone and told me to to play, you know, no matter how bad I sound, you know, how long, how many games I sat on a bench until I was able to start, you know, he was there for every step of the way and he really got in the whole community, he really pulled the community, I felt he pulled for me, even though grandparents um, really was a, a major support. You got it, our teams. You got it, our community. You know, we, this is the per type of person she'll, <laughs> if we're riding and see some trash on the road in our community, we'll stop. 
pick up the trash and take it to the uh and take it to the dump. And even if it's there too many times, we're gonna open the trash, look at the, the mail from the trash and say, hey, uh you at uh at Seaboard Lane, Mr. Mr. Uh Mr. Q, you gotta uh, you you can't do this no more. You know, and really we'll call people on that type of uh, their behavior, especially if it's been it's it's altering the, the beautification of our community, you know, and as a teacher, you know, of so many, again, I give thanks. Uh, <laughs> I love you. Appreciate you for all you do. One more. <laughs> so moving forward, we're talking about the question that's on the board right now is how do you do balance? How do you balance your divine feminine and divine masculine within yourself as the ultimate love we will dive into as we flow? as you can find that level thing. Uh, see brother Daniel's hands up. Give it thanks, hold this brother. Hold this, can everyone hear me? Okay, give it thanks. Uh, first, I wanna you know, give thanks and honor to the, to the feminine energies in the space, both embodied in the masculine, you know, and the, and the feminine bodies. And, you know, what, what I feel at this point in my life that I've discovered is that <clears throat> we, as far as the decolonization, it's like we have an original imprint within us to just be. And I feel like throughout most of our lives, we've been subject to a projection that has taught us how to be and given us almost false identities on what being even is about. And so what I feel brings balance to me is to express my soul. And the way that, like when, I, when I'm expressing from that, from that soul or that uniqueness or that purpose, there's, there's a part of me that is unidentifiable. Now I'm, you know, in, in many ways, as I come across, you know, I have, I'm in a male body, you know, I have facial hair, these things that, you know, we've, again, learned to identify as male or masculine based. And yet I can be in the kitchen with a, with a whole apron on, you know, chefing it up and not even think that, you know, that was shown to me uh, in, in, on television as a feminine thing, or that was, you know, it was like Betty Crocker or, or, you know, these different, you know, forms or formats of like how a woman performs her duty or what a woman does when she's in these creative spaces. And I feel like because we're full spectrum beings, we're unidentifiable. We, 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 we cannot be locked into any shape or any form besides the one that we lock ourselves in. And internally in our minds, if we've accepted, you know, what being feminine or what being masculine is about, then that's our work, right? And, and so for me, I feel like anything that I do that feels heart-based, that is coming from the heart brings me balance. Whether it's coming through, let's say, uh, the archetype of the feminine, bringing forth the creativity, bringing forth the expression, bringing forth that, you know, that um, the, the emotionality, bringing forth the compassion, uh, bringing forth the deep listening. Uh, or if I'm in more of a uh, exaltation of my masculine where I'm using a bit more energy or maybe a bit more force or you know holding myself as a pillar now for me these things again are ambidextrous they go both ways so they're even those things I just named for me aren't masculine or feminine but they may be useful when embodied through a masculine energy or through a feminine energy um when when I've struggled just in general with, let's say, my own self-doubt or my own worry or my own lack of confidence, I've seen pillars that are women, including my grandmother, including my mother, including, 
you know, other feminine energies in my space that offer a level of being a pillar that actually can't hold a hold a candle to the masculine energy in the way that I needed it in that moment, right? So the way that that energy was was coming forth, it although it was coming through in a feminine body, and I'm again saying that being a pillar is unidentifiable, and yet when it when it came through in that moment through a feminine body, it's exactly what I needed. That energy can also come through a, 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 a male body and it may be what I need in that moment. So we're full spectrum beings and the way that the energy comes across and the bodies that it comes across uh, through, that's up to us and how we choose to be. And so, you know, wholeness for allowing me to be here and, and thank you, Curtis, for bringing everybody together to uh, to get you know, deeper into ourselves and to find uh, within ourselves what it means to be, you know, masculine or feminine uh, and and what we need to do interpersonally to weave in and out and back and forth between those energies as they express through us. Giving thanks. Yeah, give it thanks, brother. Openness. Again, so we're going to keep it flowing. And um, again, it's so, it's like the brother said, uh, indescribable or uh, androgyn or uh, interchangeable when it comes to, yeah, we're supposed to be. You know, these whole rules of how you're supposed to be came a whole lot later by another uh, coach who didn't understand that type of balance within yourself. If you were born with these, with this tool, or, or, you know, so with these genitalia, this is who you are, this is what you are. And that box left a lot of people in cages. And by being to fully express who we truly are, the full spectrum of ourselves. Of ourselves. I'm gonna give an example, because um, we love to see, it's, it's always great to see examples within different cultures of how these things are expressed. Um, in my study, in my music studies, I studied um, music at a long third show. And one of my grad study I took, it was an anthropology class. And anthropology and musicology, well, it was musicology or ethnomusicology, which is my, uh, my background. And the first thing, because we're still honoring these roles, well, with these roles we're living with, until I was introduced to um, a native tribe and this word called a uh, bird ash, it was called, where the bird ash, based on um, more matrilineal and patriarchal time going into space, they were, the, the woman always was, the divine energy, the divine woman was so important to the progression of a family, of life, period. There was no, um, there was no short, no shorting of her honor. You know, she was to be respected in nature, to give thanks. And it was, um, it was not an option, you know, to abolish, you know, that type of energy or usurp that, you know, which came, that's how they took the power. And so the, the natives were out there on chairs for me. Where doing, we read some of it, where they um, hear a lot of Native history or Native American or indigenous people of this land is completely wiped off the books when it comes to mainstream history. Uh, my, my, uh, the oldest person in my family on my mother's side, it's a uh, last name, go by Mango. Mango is a Native name to the Mango tribe, speak from Gonquin, a Gonquin, and um, from the tribe, you know, travel from from Georgia to, to Virginia with their, 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 their passage. And uh, we see a lot of mounds. So we're gonna go into what that looks like in right here. So it goes uh, here. They call them two spirits, um, where they're known for, from their understanding was uh, two spirits in one, a masculine and a feminine residing in one body. And typically with this one particularly was a uh, male. And this was interesting because the first time I heard about this in, in, in when I was studying, and I was like, whoa, this is, and you know, before it was more homosexual. This is where we were programmed that this is homosexual. This is you know, what this is. Um, and where they had, if, if a family didn't, let me read some of it. Uh, if family didn't have um, uh, a son or a daughter to perform the role needed for that family, they had to be one to uh, take the role if it was needed. Um, and we'll read we'll some of it here. Uh, bird ash. A strange word for sure. So the bird ash history, traditional Native and American Indians that allow for gender role change. Gender role change was adopt the adoption of various reasons. A culture defining social roles that is 
dictated by the opposite sex. This means that the man could adopt the social role of woman and vice versa. Uh, in the buried ass tradition, it was almost always predomin- uh, a permanent change. However, unlike, unlike the gender role change of today, the cross-dressing in transvestites, uh, there was necessary, it did not necessarily dictate the preference of who you slept with. In fact, the bird ass tradition rarely, if ever, dictates sleeping with any members of that one of sex or sexuality of the gender of the Native, uh, Native American societies were two different concepts, which led to the confusion of poor Europeans who just couldn't understand why men would dress up as women and yet sleep with, and yet still sleep with uh, poor married women. The bird ass tradition the word as tradition were in, in tradition and the specific roles in society were different from each tribe that practiced it. Yet bird as tradition did not uh, play the vital role, I'm sorry, bird as tradition played a vital role in both the tribe and the individual level, allowing the expression of one's preferred way without dictating sexuality. And I wanted to get to a space where it's talk about, I'll, I'll send this link to. So they say out of 150 tribes known in, in the States here. Uh, only 30 of them would reside, um, 30 of them reside in Rocky Mountains, uh, reporting the presence of female bird edge. So again, highly respected, as it would say, it was a range of different views in the bird ash way of life, which ranged from reverence to respectful to teasing and the indifference to scorn and contempt. Uh, Talk about the different roles here. So in fact, the Beras were also were well known for their skills and skills that many tribes view Beras as inherently successful, but generated both powers and inspiration and inspiration to young people to become Beras, as well as for parents to value the education and advance the training of children who chose this lifestyle. However, these skills were typically never valued as much or as more than the skills of a man or, or vice versa. So they said they wasn't more than anybody else, but it was a different role that needed to be played based on that, the cultural uh, involvement. Uh, let's see here. The immediate nature was to allow birds to become, yeah, yeah, yeah. so the immediate nature also allow bird ass to become a go between between disputes between both uh, between sexes and able to resolve spousal conflicts and facilitate romance or facilitate romance in fact the male bird asses that that also free free the culture from restriction opposed during women's menstruation pregnancy or nursing the freedom to allow them to to help with the increased abundance of women's work women's work when the women were restricted as well as uh, becoming uh, continually become continuously productive so during different times uh during pregnancy or you want you could they the work need to be done there was no way to do it they also took, took that mantle to make sure that work was done for the village for the tribe for those particular roles uh, which was established by a particular tribe uh, most commonly, uh, the characteristics of the bird ass was also believed to have supernatural powers and was believed to be a medium between the psychic and physical since they possessed the vision of both sexes, which is called the double vision in certain tribes. This was due to both their immediate status in society as well as the belief that the spirit had must take must take great care and to create an individual in unique side. Uh, so shamans, so with some shamans assume the role of a bird ash or vice versa. And yeah, so I wanted to say this because we talk about uh, the balance of the divine masculine feminine within yourself or the pole and the hole or the unk within yourself. Once you can begin to, to put those things together and not be at opposite up a position within yourself you begin to see how these manifestations come because uh, and I'll share this link in the chat too and this was interesting because it was the the first time I've seen that the the value 
of anybody who were um, who had that within themselves. Because you no, know, if anything, it was you know, homosexuality, and that was you no know, shun in many communities. And if it was vice versa, you know, it was also you know, not not liking to based on the coach that we were um, uh, grew up in. And as we know that you know, you give birth to different things, but you have to have a certain complicated component to put together to birth things into the reality. And with, if you can do that within yourself, activate yourself, uh, you can have connections to more of yourself, or you have more of you to love, more of you to piece together uh, in order for the whole to manifest. So um, have anybody else ever seen any culture or have something to say about that culture that they may have heard of that uh, embraces the, uh, the balance? You know that we can pull from as something of our ancestors used to do that we can pull forward to move forward. So, and moving forward with uh, again, harnessing our power is true. And what that looks like on uh, multiple spectrum, multiple realms, it takes courage, you know, for you to turn yourself on. Um, it takes power, concentration to really develop these spiritual connections within yourself. Is there any, when expressing yourself um, in these manners, let's see what's the best question for you. Right. If any any questions, please drop them in the chat. Put a question beside it. Uh, if you have one, and if there's something that resonates with you in the space, please let it go. Let it uh, share. So having a deeper understanding about again decolonizing, because again it definitely was colonialized, and this was the places where we'll see a lot of these things happen. We talk about. Um, even learn about you know, ancient history like pharaohs. Uh, they were male and female pharaohs. But typically we would say, hey, they were males without with the ignorance and saying that these things were changed. And we're talking about how, even when, with our numbers, you know, let's get into numerology, we go from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and we go from one, let's say the phallus, the, the one, the I, when we forget about the zero. And the zero is actually symbolized, symbolizing of the womb. And we, one something came from nothing. We were all birthed from a mother, came into this space. And so even though changing the small things, when, when we count, we exercise, take like zero, one, like then going into progression, but we forget about that space. We you know to play with words, uh, we have a phallus or you know, a fallacy, because we started thinking that, hey, this external reality is the real one. When we came from the real one, we came from the zero and we, when we talking about, um, you know, think about this, you know, it's the reality, but you know, this is talking to Sister Kimberly as well. We're talking about how when you see things, as you know, it flips in order to be back in. So this whole reality is literally flipped. And our bodies will tell us that as we learn more about um, the physiology of ourselves and how we have to go inside to really get the balance. And that balance doesn't come from, uh, and I'll give you the story where in most of it, if you listen to the song on the radio, you will see you hear that it is always thinking about the yearning for someone else, a love for someone else. So you're always thinking the love is gonna come from you know, out there. You know, I was I love the RB, you know, old school is my thing. So always thinking that hey, my love, my other half is gonna come from somewhere else that's not here. When you have to realize that hey, it, it's always been in here and it has to be in here. You know, it's amazing why the heart isn't in the center, you know, <laughs> we move from it. Uh, but coming from that perspective, unlearning what we've learned to see that, hey, you got to come from this side. And that's, what does that look like for you? And how do you remind yourself to come with that balance or go in between these spaces uh, and expression of self and, you know, just being connected to a lot of women, uh, males too, but specifically women. The, the, this reality is extremely 
I say the US, well, I say the world, but specifically the US is very perverted. And you being your clear, unapologetic self and your freeness is often not met nicely, I'll say. You know, and it's, it's not, a, again, it's inverted. You know, people see, uh, see curves and think, you know, sex, you know, or six when it's supposed to be the other way around, or these individuals where um, the nine, you know, is also define the spiral of this feminine, the feminine, uh, or the balance. But I digress there. Um, please, uh, can you give some insight on, on the love that we're sharing here today? So one of the things that's come up as I'm listening to you, um, I love that you talked about two spirit people because I was typing as you were talking. So I love the resonance that's in the field, the synchronicity. Um, is this energy of Heros Gamos, this divine inner marriage that exists within all of us. So this is your two divine natures, your divine feminine and your sacred masculine coming into wholeness. So this is... a if it is not the you know kind of the ultimate um, goal of you know, expressing your divinity, it is one of the higher goals, I'll say, to fully express yourself and to be embodied sovereignty. And since you're talking about relationship, I think of it as how do I become sovereign in love? How do I come into my wholeness and my own completion? as a sovereign being and then be radiating that level of sovereignty in my own Harold Thomas so that my divine feminine and my sacred masculine are already in an inner marriage or in a holy union. So then I attract or magnetize to me another being who's also already operating. So it's you, me, we with the divine all around us. And so one of the, one of those many steps um, that can get us there is the first, I think we've got to look at where does decolonization live in me? Where is it in, where's the system in my system? What are the things that I'm believing? What are the values that I'm valuing that are inconsistent with me be, being sovereign in love? So you talked about the pharaohs, which is one of my favorites, because of course, a king is a king is a king is a king. You know, in our in our culture, there's no in in the Egyptian language, there's no such there's no word for female pharaoh. You're simply a king. You just are. So even that alone is like having that knowledge allows you to sort of unravel one more trail, so that you can get yourself out of the sticky web that is the matrix. It's not that they didn't exist. It's that the the Egyptians were so their level of consciousness was like it's not necessary to make the distinction. We don't even understand the distinction. A king is a king is a king is a king. So if we even can start there and just begin to remind ourselves, a king is a king is a king is a king. And then what does that mean? And then how do I then move that way? And if I believe that a king is a king is a king is a king, what then does that stipulate for how I'm gonna show up for myself every day? What does this kind of sovereign being, what does she do? How does she speak? What does she wear? What does she eat? What doesn't she consume? So you awaken to the avatar that is this sovereign being. And then as Daniel said, you sort of naturally migrate back to the truth and it does become non-definable. One of the things that my guides were telling me just the other day was you've got to stop worrying about the title. You know, I came out of corporate and titles are so important. Like, oh my God, if I don't have this title, I'm nobody or I'm striving to get to this title and this title means this. And if I don't make senior VP by the time I'm 40, you know, I might as well just shoot myself in the pinky toe. It's just, they want you, your ancestors really don't care. They don't, don't care about any of that. They did what they did 
they endured what they endured so that you could be here having the right to define for yourself because that's not, they didn't get that. They didn't have the luxury of that. So of course in our culture, we had our version of two spirit beings. Absolutely we did. And with the making everything wrong about the truth of who we are is one of the first steps, like decolonizing our mindset about what is wrong and what is right about your beingness. We exist, we are indigenous to this planet. Anything that is, is because we are. Wholeness. Thank you, sister. Bringing the fire, fire walker. <laughs> so, w- what I feel from this, uh, and even in the direction that we that we continue to flow, is bringing it back to the ancestors and how the ancestors were definitely in tune with the elements. And I feel, as a whole being, as a balanced being, the elements carry their own their own personalities, and sometimes when we even think of like let's say masculine energy we think of like that earth or even sometimes that fire and we would think of feminine energy we think of the the wind or the water or the flow and yet if we're in tune with ourselves we know exactly how to be in balance with the elements when that element is necessary so for me i've started to study herbs and uh started to heal my body through the herbs because the let's say for instance the food that was that i was taking in although like i eat healthy uh i was not in balance with the the internal elements necessary for me to be fully in my masculine or fully in my feminine right so because i was out of balance with the elements i wasn't able to identify with either of those because Let's say, for instance, I wasn't in the mind state to take action, which we can say is part of that fire or part of that masculine energy. And we can also say that because my fire ex- was extinguished, which which in Ayurveda they know as Agni, um, I had a lot of water, right? And and it also had a lot of earth. And the earth sometimes, the earth and in, 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 in the water uh, sometimes compete with each other, but they can also support one another so while I was supporting let's say my flow my water with the ability to have like the self-confidence both of those things were drowning out my fire right so I wasn't actually able to fully embody that the masculine the the masculine energy that could be seen as bringing forth the fire because I was imbalanced internally so I, I I take this to my study of herbs and me becoming more attuned with what my let's say system needs in regards to both food both elements both herbs i'm now better able to identify within myself uh, when i'm out of balance and what i need to bring what i need to take into my body to bring all of those elements forward when it's necessary to 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 use them to utilize them in the reality and so what i notice is is like like imbalance may show up uh let's say masculine and feminine imbalance may show up we can even say let's take it to what, what some people call like toxic max masculinity or what may come off as you know a lot of fire or even like Un, uh, maybe potentially unawareness when it comes to fire, which can burn things down, which 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 uh, maybe doesn't have like that the element of maybe the wind, which is like this all encompassing thing, which we could even see as compassion, right? So if somebody is out of balance elementally, we've learned to label that as something, and as soon as it gets labeled and defined, it's so much more difficult to work with because it it now has a let's say a matrix based definition that then that projection keeps that being um 
out of balance within themselves and the reflections that they're potentially getting back based in judgment versus direction aren't necessarily putting that being back into balance which balance exists outside of all of these labels like the sister is saying so for me i would take it back to the elements and notice when like look at all the elements and ask self which are am i embodying am i able to embody all of these elements at any point in time that i choose or are there specific elements that i don't feel connected to or that i feel out of alignment with or that i feel that i go to a state of imbalance when i embody that certain element and working with the body working with the temple to balance the elements within so giving thanks would love to hear any reflection uh, in regards to that Even that brother, even that, thinking that, thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, when you said um, the elements, you know, was that something that again, this, this, these, these are also our ancestors. When we talk about, you know, ancestors in the physical, we're made up of these elements. Every mineral on the planet we can find naturally within us in some proportion, and how we use those and put those things together is how we truly step into our fullest being, a full spectrum of self. And like you said, again, the diet. There's so many things that can, you know, throw us off guys, you know, internally, externally, and coming up with a diet or regimen, you know, that, that works for you and actually having a balance within the mind, body, spirit, you know, um, you need that. And some of the elements I was, um, we talked about also the divine masculine. How do you access that? Now, that's something that's not go back to when I first was uh, uh, offered that question within myself. How do I embrace my master? How do I embrace my feminine? And I would think about uh, how how they how I see them being approached. You know how I see them being approached. Um, when I think about the womb, the womb is there. You know, it's a zero. You know, it's always it's where nothing comes from. You know, we're birthed into this world, and so it's stationary. It's found, and you you can find in almost every coach and probably some of our my family some of the most stable people in the family is the woman or the grandmother who ain't going nowhere man might go you know to places but the woman they you find them grounded there able to be approached and so i was like well you go inside the womb the men go inside and you, you must uh be vulnerable to go into the darkness and with your feminine within yourself you also have to be um you must have you choose your master and i learned this later too but uh, this, uh, this year where the womb would choose the egg you know that 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 she receives and i was like cool. i have to receive uh you have to again drop be vulnerable within yourself to express yourself you know, like you know let's say man don't cry and so i had to learn to cry you know what i mean like that wasn't a thing that i guess it feel nasty wells up inside of you but you Typically, you would just push it down, stuff it, smother it, and you just, you know, you know, tear come down, look, throw it back in the eye, like, that ain't going up, uh uh. And so you never access you know, that part of myself, but you, so you're turning down more of you. So it would go back into meditation to say, hey, how do I, how do I, how do I access that? How do I embrace, you know, that part of myself? And, um, and that once before it came through a cry, letting myself experience my tears and riding that emotion. Because you know, say even the Hindu you know, uh, perspective, they, they consider emotions uh, horses. And these horses are, you know, they're strong, they're horse power. You know, they can pull you in a direction, energy, emotion, emotion. And with these, you cannot, you know, lose control of the horse because you can take you into a space you don't want to go, but you can use that to access certain things. Like even say back in the church, where you see people catch the spirit, like yo, that's, they took that and allowed that to connect them to the divine. But you can also let it take you any other place too. So you want to make sure you're within well, to my journey and accessing the fullest parts of myself. I had to allow my emotions to take me where I wanted to go. You know, um, if I had to go into a sadness of myself, if I, I need, like, for example, I give an example when I'm, 
had a, uh, an issue with reading at one point. I told him someone from people that's close. Uh, I had an issue with reading. I did not like reading because something happened in the third grade class of mine. And in third grade, I had a teacher who demolished my expression because that's the that's the stress and creativity. I'm getting that and I'm going in. And the first time I did it, my teacher, her name was Miss Floyd. She demolished me in the front of the whole class. Like she just kind of took a red pink uh, red pen out and marked everything out. I, I spent the whole weekend writing my first, you know, presentation into my class. And it, you know, it demolished you know, my, my, my foundation of growth within uh, my uh, academics. Later on, up until like 27, you know, I was, I was I going back into a meditation with another brother of mine. And I went back to that memory and I was met with tears because it, it was hard for me. You know, why can't I, you know, excel academically or read, you know, fall into the space? And I would not go back into the memory because it was too hard for me to bear until I went back into that space through the tears and went there for myself, like Danielle was saying, went there for myself and uh, hugged myself like teachers ain't, you know, all teachers ain't good teachers. She just wasn't there to receive you in that way. And allow myself to really get all the tears out from being misunderstood, from being um, laughed at by the old class and, and saying, hey, it's okay. You're amazing. And filling myself back up when that was initially thought of as a feminine thing, and it is to go inside, you know, and that's why I think a lot of men have a hard time going inside. So we're so used to being outside the phallus or the fallacy. It's a fallacy. It's a lie that you're going to answer everything out here when it's you're supposed to go inside. If you can't go inside, you're missing some of the best parts of you. And so from that, that's my, that's my example of having to unlearn what I've learned as masculine, feminine and come into the balance of my true and job and spirit and playing the role. So give it thanks. Always. Thank you, brother. That was absolutely, it, it, it just pushed me forward because I've really been sitting here contemplating how do I balance the, fam, the feminine and masculine within myself? And I think it has come to a place on my journey where they're so intertwined and evolving that it's really hard for me to kind of distinguish <laughs> because it has just now become pure energy, pure love, pure strength. And because there is strength, different types of strength that maybe um, is defined as masculine, but I also identify with the strength that is being feminine. Like, and I rock hard and good in that, you know what I mean? Okay. <laughs> and, and I help people just really rock hard and good within themselves, however, just being. You know, I, I I really now I remember a time in my life when I felt I had to be more masculine because I was an only child and I was constantly. But even within that, my ideology was that I was Wonder Woman. So I was like ping, 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 you know, <laughs> in terms of me defending myself as as someone who was in a neighborhood full of children who had siblings and you know how it is you know you're the you're, i got bullied just because i was i didn't have siblings it wasn't that you know they wasn't bullying me though over my sneakers or anything they were bullying me because i didn't have a sibling so i had to show up as my my big brother <laughs> for myself i had to be the protector of myself but then like i said as time has gone on I'm my my self is integrated into this just being a being and just taking the strength of being just a being not masculine not feminine although my shell is feminine I just am I just am I just am <laughs> so that's all I have <laughs> Thank you for allowing me to share. And thank everyone for their shares because it took me a long time to really sit with this. I, I really give thanks for all of you who have spoken before me. 
just to give thanks, join in. I am what I am. Yes, as Sofa was uh, speaking, I have a question that came into my mind and I just thought I should ask, not to expect an answer, but just to ask. What if what of part of the decolonization is to actually realize that there are no separate energies as masculine or feminine? It's just one thing that for some reason we need to define because as she was explaining, it's so connected, it's so together, what makes us believe that it's two different things. And even thinking further back, excellence is because now you made me think even more that I think about my father who wasn't in the house at um, when I was younger, but I did have a stepfather and he was every bit of a gentle being. And if I had subscribed to those roles of, you know, he's supposed to be this, you know, but he was so gentle with me. He was even the person who affir affirmed my femininity as I grew into a teenager, you know? So it wasn't like, it, it was, I remember him like telling me, like being the person to say, you know what, you're beautiful. Like don't, you know, you look, you look great. Like just assuring, giving me that self-esteem. Now I'm not saying my mother didn't, she did it in a different way. You know, she, she purchased the clothes, she put them on me and, and, you know, but he was there to, to, to even be as soft, as gentle to, to, so it wasn't, and I don't even, I don't, I can't, he was just being too. So yeah, our whole thought about, you know, hi, oh, <laughs> Everybody say hi to Ol. <laughs> Hello, Mulao. <laughs> now, baby. Sorry, he said hey. Hi. <laughs> now say bye. Bye, day. See Hello. you. Love you. <laughs> yeah, it's it's just you know. I think this work, this this decolonization, has been in the works for several years, decades. And I think it is, especially now, we are finding ourselves in a place where we are really standing in it, unapologetically. And um, just, just um, gravitating towards tribe who is, is flowing in that same way. And it's comfortable and it's nice and it's human. And it flows and I, I believe it's in line with our truest nature. So I digress. <laughs> and just to complete my thought maybe on that, and it's also probably the separation that we have created with the divine, whatever that means to us, right? We just enter this belief that it has to be two separate things, masculine, feminine, God is somewhere, we are somewhere else. So we just some way, somehow got into the idea that it cannot be just one thing. We have to create different boxes for it to make sense to our brain. But what if it's maybe time for us to realize that there is no two separate things. There is no divine somewhere that we have to reach and we are somewhere else. What if we are just one thing? You know, it's like the ocean and the wave. They have two different names, but are they two different things? I'm complete. Yes, let's go, yes. I know everybody went like, yes, 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 keep, yes, that's it. <laughs> All the two, that, that's, that's philosophical right there. It's the ocean and the wave, are they two different things? No, but we give them that name. We gave the separation or it was passed down to us to separate, to divide. When we again, we go back to the Torah, it comes inside. It's a singularity and comes back out again. But somehow we leave it out there, but now we bring it in. The time is now for us to dive into the center, where it is, where it is one, or where it is zero, we collapse it back into the center. The Bindu point. <laughs> please share. Please welcome. Is this a faith? 
Japanese? No, hold on a second. Yes, Sister Banga, you have something else to add, please. You know, I think in our true sense, as, as we're going to redefine it, you know, allow us to redefine ourselves. And now we're, we're not. And just going on, yes. as we often do. And she was like, sister, sister, sister. You can't hear me? Hey, you know, but it went out again, dear. Can you hear us? Take you back now. It was frozen a bit. Danny? You back? <laughs> Mic is down. Hey, you need to come over here and come, it's, come down or turn up the um the video this year. That's why. Okay, you back, good. Oh, uh, can y'all hear me? Um, uh, it's just uh, something a sister shared about two or three years ago. I, I was on the phone, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you know, just going on as we do, complaining or or just wondering. You know, we go into our wonders, and she she stopped me. And she just said, "Sister, the soul just wants to experience, right?" So that brings me to center a lot of times. The soul just wants to experience. Like when when the mind starts going and going and going, should I be doing this? Is this something? Is this something okay. that a man should be doing, or is this something that a mother should be doing, or is this something? Thing that I should be doing. The soul just wants the experience. Gravitate to those things that speak to your soul, to the truest being of who you are. And then you lose these titles and you lose these um, roles and you lose the, the mind, the mind going of it all. The, the, the just going, going, going of should, shouldn't. What does the soul want? What does the truest essence of who you are, your being, want to experience and live the life through that? to share that before I forgot it. <laughs> yeah, I think that's right. Remembering that in past lifetimes, we've been everything, right? So I think it was Curtis who said, you know, these plants, these minerals, these trees, they are ancestors because you are the ancestor and the descendant in this lifetime of all things. And so I love that point. You, you know, I've, I've been a male previous lifetime. I have memories of those lifetimes. And so, of course, what Christelle said, of course, what sister said about, I just, what if it is simply about being the quintessence of the divine? Because the divine does not make the distinction. You know, I jokingly say people who are like super religious are going to be really shocked when they make their transition and they realize that God's pronoun is they. I mean, this is the it, <laughs> we are all that has ever been. So of course you're going to express in both of these energies because this is how we're coming back into wholeness, back into full integration, remembering, remembering all those aspects of self that have happened and that are happening, right? As multidimensional beings, things are happening. We're just tuned into this, this particular dimension, into this realm, but Right now, you're in many places doing many things. Your soul's off doing multiple versions of you. And so, of course, absolutely, the highest level of divine sovereignty and embodiment is to realize that you are all you are all things. Like there is no distinction between the feminine and the masculine. And still in this experience, in this 3D realm, there are initiations and gates and thresholds that we pass through to really embody that. And part of that is the decolonizing of what we've been taught about what it means so that you can get to that place and you can be sovereign as the divine one so that you can achieve Harris Gamos inside of yourself and then radiate that and teach that to others just by being that. And
Giving thanks for getting so much wisdom that's coming through right now. And again, this the the confirmation, you know, some of the things uh, we felt and now we're getting others to help us, you know, with the confirmation of what's going on and even words, you know, English can be quite chaotic, you know, quite confusing. And uh, having more from other experience and even experiencing a similar reality is value. And I try, I give thanks for all those who tune in and give value to to the build. Because again, again, like you're saying, the whole the, one of the highest maxims is, is, is unity, you know, within yourself, coming into the divine one. Never to be divided again. Said so remember, like remember, like put it back together again. Like get, get your uh, get your um, <laughs> get your get your membership up again. Like bring it, bring it, come back into the whole. All these, all of us are reflections of each other, and, and how we can accept each other as we are, as we speak, and our experiences we're telling right now, accept it as our truth, and that will also be a pillar within you, within your reality, within who you are. Embrace us. And this will allow you to move even farther. You know, separation is an illusion. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like Brother Savan said, all, all the pieces go back into the same box at the end of the day. And then we are multidimensional beings, just for the example of the dream state in here. We go to sleep, we're in a whole different space, you know? <laughs> and now we have, so we operate in, at, at minimum too, but we know that there's so, so, so much more in infinite that is all us. And the more we communicate in earnestly, coming together like this, putting things together, sharing our uniqueness. We give us the, uh, the quote, uh, we give each other the, uh, what's the quote? Oh, I'm so when I do it, we give it the, the permission to be great, so the permission to be superhero, the permission to be phenomenal as we, tap into ourselves and really share that unapologetically. Like my sister says, wow, wow, wow. This, the soul just wants to experience. It's powerful. We have so many maxims and pillars that we can pull forward and take forward from today. Mm -hmm. Please, please share. Um, sister, is Elder Queen T, would you like to share? Uh, you, you, uh, you're muted right now. So, uh, it's unmute your mic. Not just yet. You hear me now? Yes, ma'am. Give it thanks. Give thanks. I'm I'm so grateful to be here my first time. But I wanted to say that the few years I've been on this planet, um, I realized that the more the more of a state of humility that you're in, the more you can receive. And we have to overstand people's situations. I, I couldn't understand why some people may speak to you on Tuesday and then act as if they don't know you on Friday. That bothered me for years until I realized that people are in different places internally. And so as I grew, matured, and became more humble within myself, I'm ready to receive. And you had said something about being great. Yes, I think we should strive on being great than success, successful. But just as an experience of life, it's just so good to be humble. And you'll still be acknowledged. The less you say, the more beautiful you are in some cases if you're around a lot of people. And some people have a tendency to believe that if you have a whole lot to say and you're the laugh of the party that, you know, everyone is going to love you, you'll be noticed. But to be humble is such a great attribute and the character of a person. And I know you all talked a lot about energies, but all that is a part of energies. And I also wanted to say that you can heal people and not even be around them. The things that you have said to them in the past, they still remember. And the way you made them feel, they still remember, and that's part of healing. So I encourage all the young people just to work on being humble. Is, which is very important. And all good energies come out of it uh, at the end of the day. And for me, I just take one day at a time. And when I see someone that particularly may not like me for whatever reason, I still 
I'm still learning how to show love. And I want to say thank you for everything. Yeah, thanks, Sister Queen T. Thank you for thank coming through, sharing. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, Queen T is a phenomenal dance instructor, African dance instructor as well. She's phenomenal. She moves beautifully. You know, and, and teaches the community from, from DC to South Carolina and anybody else who stepped foot in her class. You know, she's just another pillar in the community here in South Carolina now. Yes. And I, can, may I say one other thing? Please say three. <laughs> yeah, that, that, uh, dancing, dancing, dancing. When I started uh, many years ago, but it's a, it's a form of freedom. Uh, especially to my beautiful queen sisters, it's a, whatever genre of dance you do, it's a form of freedom and all kinds of good energies. Now, since I've grown a little bit more, people say I kind of go into my own little world and they said, well, what's going on, queen? I said, I'm in another planet. Because sometimes I roam back and forth to different planets. That's what I say I'm doing. And that's what I feel that that's what's happening because I shift off, you know, and I wanted to say that uh, the dancing, the movement is all kinds of energies come at you. You don't even know some of the things you're doing because you're in a different time zone. And I just wanted to say also that uh, dancing is a revolution, especially for our queen sisters. That's our form of fighting back all of the white supremacy and all of the negativity that comes through our spirit. And um, I, I, again, I thank uh, Baba Haru for inviting me. And I met him five years ago when I first came to the city, came to South Carolina, and it's been a blessing. He has a little baby boy that's already been here. He was here probably maybe a hundred years ago. That baby has been here. So I just want to say thank you and for mommy and, and you raising him. He's going to be phenomenal. Just continue to teach humility to him and all of your children. Thank you for allowing me to speak. <laughs> thank you for coming, mother. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Does somebody want to add to Queen T's expression? Nice. Yeah, she said something specifically um, to remind me of an experience. All of us have these amazing experiences uh, or the soul just wants to experience. And this, these experiences are also, again, you know, go back to the tours. You know, we on a tour, like like an artist would go on a tour in different Yes. Places. And it was a sister um, years ago, I mean, 10 years ago, that um, I would put things in levels at one point, like this level, you know, she's on this level, he's on this level. And she was like, why do you put things on levels? You know, like on a like a higher, like a vertical. And so we uh, we started talking about it, and I changed my mindset. I'm like, you're right. People are always they are, like you said, and at different space and time. So I started identifying people as or seeing it as like a sphere. Or now we have the torch, where you have no point is is um is estranged from the rest. Or there's no under or over part of it. It is what it is. It is what it is, and um, that uh, it, it allows you to to move in the, with that spectrum and that level of awareness that no one's greater, no one's less than. We just are. We're just being. And it's again like Sister Background Gabrielle. You're just different points on your tour, and your ability to connect all those points from your from your viewpoint or your vantage point gives you that level of awareness that you can take within with you. So I give thanks for the, the awareness, the love here. Um, again, as, as you all see, these are amazing sisters. You, you can hit them up. You'll see also how to have everybody link. If you have a website um, or send your email, we can put it out there because these are also mentors. Everybody here is a mentor. Everybody here is a, an inspiration, a reflection of self that you can connect to, and we're open to that level of connection. So we want to continue to have builds like this and take it forward because the wisdom needs to come from many mouths. The song needs to come from many lips. And the more the uh, I'm my words now, the more.
colors that we can express ourselves in. It just makes that, that rainbow that much more uh, colorful, that art, the, the peace, you know? So we need you, your uniqueness, to really say where you're coming from on your tour. Express that to your best ability. And you know, trust me, if you come from the heart, it will be received well in balance. So I thank you all for sharing from the heart today. Uh, if anybody else want to share or ask any questions uh, before we head out, we're wrapping it up right now. And um, we're wrapping it up right now. Um, if you want to come through with a last question to take forward, uh, please, uh, if you have an email, if you don't mind sharing that, you can drop it in the chat and uh, let you know we have the next bill. But more conversation needs to be had. And I can just say from a fact of um, through my experience in my community, we need, well, this is everybody, but we need more conversation like this. But we, I know men are very, not, men are very impressionable. And if it's the, all like all these beautiful queens here, got uh, supreme beings here, the more we can see that instead of, you know, mainstream media stuff or what they perpetuate as, as feminine or as masculine, the better. So, and that's why we were sharing this on the social media platform. Anybody in Harmony and the Resonance can check it out and they can receive some of the love shared in this space and allow them to find themselves and go in a bit more for themselves. You can find me at OneTribe.io um, and also on Secret Energy as a soul coach where Secret Energy has a hub of resources when we talk about you know, more knowledge about self, allowing you to go with it. Uh, I give thanks for spending time wholeness and balanced vibrations. You all are so beautiful. I give thanks for coming through. And my mama, thank you for tuning in too. Thank you.